So in this video, what I'm going to do is, is continue talking about spatial block data, uh, but I'm going to uh, follow the same pattern that we did for time series data and uh, spatial geostatistical data, which is having laid down a foundation of the basic concepts. We're going to next talk about some of the uh, more exploratory uh, statistics and analyses that one often would perform uh, before moving on to actually how we would develop uh, uh, true spatial process models that account for uh, the spatial autocorrelation in, in block data. Uh, so two really common uh, uh, summary statistics that are often ca calculated for spatial block data are, are Moran's I and, and Geary C, with Moran's I probably being the more common of the two. Um, and these are essentially uh, analogous to the ideas of, of uh, covariance and semivariance that we, or, or correlation and semivariance that we looked at. Uh, you know, with point data, we kind of calculated uh, a, a point-based uh, correlation curve um, this is kind of the area-based equivalent to that because if you look at what we have in the numerator, it's essentially a weighted covariance because you're calculating the difference between each the y at each point and its mean, the j at each point, uh, the, the y at point j and and the mean, um, and so you're calculating you know that's a, a covariance. And but with, it's now a weighted covariance because you're weighting it by the weights from the um, proximity matrix. So you have a weighted covariance in the numerator, and then in the denominator you have, you know, you know, uh, y minus y bar squared. So that's going to give us a variance. But now we have a weighted variance, and so when we have a weighted covariance normalized by weighted variance, you're basically getting uh, a, a covariance, something analogous to a covariance, um, and then. In the Geary C, uh, we have that variance in the denominator, but in, in the top, we have something that's uh, like what we did in the variogram, uh, a semivariance. So rather than the difference between of y i from y bar and y j from y bar, we're just looking at the difference between y i and y j from each other. And again, you know, we're using the weights here uh, um, that represent the spatial. Um, uh, proximity or spatial adjacency. Um, if the yi are independent, both are going to be asymptotically normal statistics, but almost by definition, the yi aren't going to be independent. Um, uh, but if they are, it's also worth noting that the expected value for the Moran's i uh, when there is no spatial pattern is a value you know, minus one over n minus one, which means that you know value very close to zero. Uh, which makes sense because we'd expect no correlation to be zero. And then the Geary C produces uh, a mean of one, you know, where the, the semivariance and the variance are, are the same, which again is analogous to when we looked at the semivariogram where you go to a, an asymptote uh, when the, you know, at, at large distances, you know, the, uh, that the variance in the semivariogram should asymptote to just the background variance. And uh, like we see in a lot of you know, uh, correlation and, and semi-variogram calculations uh, in both space and, and point reference uh, spatial, in, in time and, and point reference spatial data, uh, any significance testing is usually done uh, using some sort of permutation test. So essentially, uh, any interval estimates or, or tests are, are basically bootstrapped. So if we think back to the map we showed earlier of, of spatial patterns of uh, SAT scores across the US, uh, Moran's I, which again, you know, should have a, a zero when there's no uh, relationship, has a, a strong positive correlation, uh, almost about 0.6, uh, with a, a standard error of about 0.1, which gives us fairly strong evidence against the null hypothesis hypothesis of no spatial correlation. Uh, similarly with Geary C, uh, again, again, remember the, the null value there is one, and so we're now getting, uh, that would be the, the spatial co 
covariance uh, when you asymptote to um, uh, no relationship. So now this this low value of Geary C suggests that you know spatially adjacent uh, locations uh, have much less variance than you would expect by chance. So only you know just a little bit more than a third than you would expect by variance that you would expect by chance. Uh, and again, the standard deviation of that on that is quite tight, so giving us again evidence against our our null hypothesis. Uh, so this warning here points out uh, to remember that this is just a, a basic initial exploratory analysis because we have not built a statistical model uh, that has been adjusted for covariance. Covariance. So we don't have any x's predicting these y's. We just are looking at the spatial correlation, uh, and like we uh, did uh, with geostatistical data, you know what you might be much more interested in would be uh, what's the spatial association uh, in the residuals of a model after you've taken into account uh, the covariates? Because that would point to you whether you uh, have explained the data well using your covariates or whether there's additional spatial uh, association that needs to be explained. Uh, so in this case, you know, we know, remember when we looked at that, the map of SAT scores, the Midwestern states tended to have uh, higher uh, SAT scores, but you know the, the timestamp uh, for that was the late 90s, and, and you know at that time in particular, uh, Midwestern colleges very much relied on the the ACT score instead of the SAT score. So essentially, only students looking to attend college out of state on the coasts would have taken the SAT. So to, you know, the, it's a non-random set of students uh, who would be bothering to take the SAT. Um, but you know, key point here is is our map, our, our Rand's I and Geary C all motivate the idea that we'd want to be looking for the actual covariates that explain our our spatial pattern. Uh, next, uh, similar to what we talked about uh, for spatial data, for spatial point data and time series data. One of the things we will often want to do uh, with spatial um, block data is think about, you know, how would we smooth spatial block data? Uh, and one simple way to smooth spatial block data is just to replace uh, any you know, the, the uh, value y i y at particular value. You know, what if we replace that with just uh, the weighted mean of all the blocks that are adjacent to it? Uh, weighted by that adjacency. So you, you have the saying, you know, uh, what would you predict at this location just using uh, the values from the, the blocks that are proximate? Um, now that is kind of extreme because it means you're, you know, you're smoothing the data at YI, completely dropping YI from consideration at all. So you could generalize that uh, to maybe saying, okay, Let's consider a weighted mean between uh, this smooth value and the value that's actually there, where this alpha, this shrinkage factor, kind of gives you ability to do that weight. So you could kind of imagine at one extreme when alpha equals zero, there's no spatial smoothing and you're just seeing the yi at every location. And at the other extreme, when alpha equals one, you're only see seeing uh, the influence of your neighbors and you could set that alpha uh, in between to kind of provide different levels of, of spatial smoothing for block data. Uh, then finally, you know, what we're gonna ultimately wanna do is move on to uh, model-based inference and, and you know, spatial models inevitably are going to provide some degree of smoothing uh, based on the expected value of our data, uh, of our y given what's, you know, given the data based on some predictions uh, from some predictive model, um, just noting here again, the smoothing emerges as a byproduct of most spatial models and hierarchical spatial models used to explain the variability in, in Y. Uh, so if you want to, you know, you know, just to say that you know the outputs of our process models are then are very naturally going to smooth over uh, the noise in our data.
So with that, uh, I'm going to in the next lecture move on to talking about how do we actually build a statistical models that include uh, spatial adjacency.